Hello and welcome to the next episode of Let's Code x86 Assembly. And last time we learned how to use the NASM or NASM Assembler, how to create the first Hello World program and today we want to continue on our quest. As usual I'm taking ideas from Oscar Toledo's Programming Boot Sector Games book, which is a great way to learn 8086 assembly programming running under DOS or even real mode boot sector based without any operating system kind of stuff. So if you want to have it, uh, go to lulu.com and look for programming boot sector games. This is basically a uh, book on demand thing. So you order this and it will get printed and shipped to you in a couple of days. Uh, that being said, I don't get any kickbacks from this, but I think uh, Oscar is doing a great job in uh, yeah, teaching you how to code x86 assembly. So let's uh, continue on our quest. Today we want to talk about uh, how the x86 computes stuff, basically, doing arithmetics like plus, minus, multiplying, division, Stuff like that. Very basic things. Short recap, the ORC OX100 is necessary if we want to produce COM files, which you can execute in DOSBox or on a real old PC DOS-based machine, um, because the first 100 hex or 255 bytes are used up by the DOS control block from the command line interpreter. We actually need a library for input and output, which we will include in uh, the main program called math1.asm and our library will be called library1.asm. You can include other files verbatim by using percent %include and then in double quotes the file name. It will search in the current directory. You can also pass uh, search paths to NASM, but we won't do that here. All we need to do is define our functions that we want to have here. One is called display letter. And for this, we will use the graphics interrupt uh, hexadecimal 10. And as usual, we select the function that we want to execute by writing to AH the function number, which is hexadecimal E. And we write to the BX register the uh, page in the high part, which is page zero, which is the page that is currently displayed. You can also switch around pages in the text mode uh, graphics memory, but we won't do that right now. And uh, BL takes as usual the color, which is only used when you are doing graphics mode, so it will be ignored. We could also write just a uh, zero here, but uh, let's keep it like this so it will also work in graphics mode. However, a couple of registers are destroyed by calling the interrupt 10 hexadecimal, so we need to push those registers onto the stack. For example, the AXF register was overwritten by us, so we need to push it to the stack and later pop it again from the stack and at some point we also need to return to the caller. So there's a red here. Furthermore, the BX and CX and DX registers get destroyed. So we also store and restore those. And there might be some people writing in the comment sections right away. Wait, why do you list all those things? You can simply do a push A and a pop A, which is correct insofar that from the 8186 and the 8286, we get two new opcodes called push A and pop A, which save and restore all the registers. However, we want to be able to run this on an original PC and XT, so we can't use those. And also, they push all the registers on the stack and the stack is a limited resource. So we only want to save those registers that actually get changed. Furthermore, the source index and the destination index register get mangled, so we need to do that. And also there's an error here because everything you put on the stack, you need to take off the stack in reverse order. 
once you've written down this, you should reverse all of this. And lucky enough, Emacs has a function for that. So we pop di, si, dx, cx, bx, and ax in exactly the reverse order that we put them on the stack. So this is the function for displaying a letter. We could also do the read keyboard, but let's save that for later. What I definitely want is a bit more clean output on the screen. So I will also define a function called newline where I push AX and restore it and return to the caller. And in between I um, will output a carriage return and a new line. The carriage return is um, the character A hexadecimal. And then we call simply display letter. And the new line is the ASCII character hexadecimal D. And we again call display letter and this will just output a new line, which lets us output multiple things on the screen, basically with a new line in between. So this is all good. Furthermore, I want to be able to easily print a digit um, that is passed in the AL. Um, register. So actually I could probably just push AL, but never mind. I'm just pushing the whole register. Then we add 30 hexadecimal to the AL value because um, the ASCII character at position 30 hexadecimal is actually the zero and 31 hexadecimal is the one and so on. So you can basically print out every digit from zero to nine just by adding 30 hexadecimal to it. And then we just call display letter again. Easy enough, isn't it? All right, now we have the function, uh, functions that we actually want. And in theory, we should already be able to assemble this and I'm trying to make this a bit larger for you people to see at home. And this actually produced something. One more thing, if we ran this now, it would produce very weird stuff and probably crash because we forgot one thing. Um, right now the program never exits and for convenience, whenever we enter into a library with our code, we best call the DOS or DOS interrupt 20 hexadecimal because that will actually quit the program as we learned in our last uh, episode. Math1.com is of course 43 bytes. So let's run it and it does nothing. That's good, it does not crash. But now we can actually start doing algebra. Basically very, very simple mathematical operations. So let's say we want to do a simple addition. Let's say we want to compute the value of four plus three. How do we do that? Well, first you load the four into our AL register, and then you call the add opcode actually, pretty simple. And you say whatever is in AL should be added to three. And then you will have the result in AL. It will also set a couple of flags eventually, there will be a carry flag is um, AL overflows. So you can count with eight bits up to 255. And if you add one more, you will get zero again, but the carry flag will be set. So you know that there should be a ninth bit that you need to take care of. But we will come back to that later. Most important of all is that right now we're doing something without overflow. So let's take that as it is and just call print digit and new line. This should be good enough for us to assemble into something useful and it should output seven. So hopefully we get a seven. There it is. So what did we do? We loaded the AL register with a number and then called the add opcode on AL with another number and that basically computes four plus three or whatever you put in there. Then we called our print digit function which converts the numeric value by adding 
where do we have it? Down here, by adding 30 hexadecimal to a useful ASCII character, and then it calls display letter, as well as new line, so that we get a new line here because we will put some more stuff in here. Same goes for subtraction. Let's say we want to compute for minus 3 instead of that, so we should get back 1. Again, we load AL with the value that we want. Then we call sub on AL and whatever value we want. And we can do the same as before. We call print digit and new line. Again, this should assemble without any warnings and we get one as the output. Okay, we can do plus, we can do minus. Next most complicated thing would be multiplication. Let's say we want to multiply three by two. Fair enough. Let's move AL with three. So AL contains three now. We then can call, um, we have to actually load another register because this time uh, we will use the CX or CL register depending on your uh, size of your operands with the value 2 and then we can call mul CL. All right so here we have a slight difference you don't put uh, the multiplicand directly or as an immediate value into the operation but you have to load it into the CL register first. Okay a bit more complicated but should lead to correct result. We hope that we will see a 6 and after assembly we get a 6. Works fine. Good enough. Let's do division. Division is probably similar. Let's divide 100 by 33. This should give us uh, 3 and a remainder of 1. So let's write our expectations here, which are easy enough, but so we can check if it's all right. So you would think that the division works roughly as the multiplication, and that's almost right. So one thing that we need to notice is that we won't be doing, or won't be loading AL with the value, so MOF AL 100 would in theory work because 100 is small enough to fit into AL but you always do division of let's say a 16-bit register by an 8-bit register or a 32-bit register double basically uh, meaning we will let, let, me, let me explain it like this so um, one example is that you load values into DX AX and divide it by let's say CX Alternatively, you load things into AHAL or AX and divide it by CL. That's why we will do MOF AX100 and we will uh, load CL with our divisor, uh, so 33, and then we can do diff CL. This will work. Uh, what won't work is if we do this. This will crash the program because DX wasn't initialized successfully. Um, but this should work as well as uh, loading DX with a zero and then dividing. But this is a bit longer and we don't need the extra steps because our numbers are small enough. So what we will do is we use CL and divide by that. One other thing that we get back is we will get the result in AL, remainder in AH. Same goes for um, this, we will get the result in AX and the remainder in DX. This is basically 32 bit divided by 16 bit and this down here is a 16-bit value divided by an 8-bit value. All right, so we can print this out. What we also want is the remainder, and that is in AH. We print a comma, 
and then we moth al comma ah which is the remainder load remainder and then we again print the digit okay if i can type correctly and then the new line so this should in theory give us a3 and a1 divided by a separate by a comma and there we have it 716 and 3 comma 1 this is uh, all you need to know about the divisions i think one last example are bit shifts there are of course multiple bit shift versions you can do shifting to the left by some value sh um, shifting to the right by some value etc etc Let's have a look at uh, left shifting, let's say, by a by two bits. Well, again, we load AL with some value that we want. And then we can left shift by one bit at a time. Funny enough, uh, you need to write it like this. You can't just write shift left AL comma two. But there's an alternative to that. Uh, you could load CL with the appropriate value, like 2, and then do shift left AL comma CL. And that is actually allowed. So let's uh, comment this out and use this. If you need to do only one shift then or one or two shifts, then you can use uh, a form like this. But if you need to shift by more bits, then something like this is probably more appropriate. Again, we do the call print digit and the new line. And one shifted by two gives us, let's see, uh, it assembles and when we print it out, we get four, which is naturally true. Shifted by one will be two and then again gives us four. As I said, you can also do right shifts in the same manner so we have shift left, shift right. We also have uh, rotate right and rotate left, which will not fill up with zeros, but rotate the bits around. And the ones that fall out on the right or the left get pushed in on the other side. And there's also versions which take care of the carry flag, which we haven't properly introduced yet, but uh, which we'll get to in one of the future episodes. However, I think this is enough for today. You now know how to load the registers with values for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division and how to create a library that you can include which outputs single digits and is able to output also new lines, which is I think already pretty useful. So. The program is still short, but in the next episode we will program our first little game. Uh, a very simple game at that, of course, but it will get more complex. I think this is probably already enough for all the beginners here. And there are, of course, optimizations and things that you can do differently, but we will get to them uh, in a certain amount of time because I think we can't introduce too many concepts and opcodes at once. For now, this should suffice. I thank you very much for watching. If you want to support me, then please share, like and subscribe the video. You can also join me on Patreon, where I will release videos on this topic a couple of days early for all the Patreon supporters as a thank you. And uh, later in the week, I will release it for everyone for free on YouTube as usual. But that's it for today. Have a very nice evening and I hope to see you soon.